Hello, everyone, and welcome back to GSA. We apologize for the delay due to some technical issues, but here we are again with some triple bingo action. This is round two of the tournament. This match here that we have is between Small Ant 1 and Awesome Agron. This is, um, I believe, their first match of the tournament, um, getting a bye from the preliminary, so very exciting to see these guys in action for the first time. In this tournament, joining me on commentary today, I have Yo Yo Swift. How's it going? Hey. How are you doing? Good. Good. That's good. Um, and I think we have both of our competitors in the call with us as well. We'll start with you, Agron. I know that you are very seasoned in bingo. This is one of your kind of strong suits in Super Mario Odyssey. Tell me how you're feeling about this match. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, while the uh, internet issues definitely uh, put me on tilt, but yeah, I'm good now. <laughs> as long as everything is working over there, we should be good. Is there any, um, I always kind of like to ask this question, is there any square on the board that ever intimidates you? Uh, intimidates me like 100%. I mean, like, I don't know. Realistically, like, it just depends on the board, you know, what synergy. Can... I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I guess 28 unique captures with, like, a loss finish. It is possible. You just need to get them all. Yes, so, indeed. I, I guess that's it a... Is a very situational thing okay. as far as bingo is concerned. Um, and also... On the blue corner, we have with us Small Ant One, who has made us a very, very cute-looking Goomba picture here. Small Ant, how are you doing today? Hi there, I'm doing great. That's good to hear. This um, bingo action. How well versed are you in this bingo idea? Uh, there was a tournament uh, in the summer that I entered, and I practiced a heck of a lot for that, and ended up doing okay. I think I made it to top eight. I haven't done bingo since, and I just remembered earlier this weekend that I have a bingo match coming up, so <laughs> didn't have access to my Switch. So yesterday and today, I just mowed through a ton of bingo boards, noticed that, oh, there's bingo version 2.0 with goals that I've never done before. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> with the, uh, the new heart goals and the key goals, so I'm uh, a little concerned about them, but I did a lot of looking into it, did some practice, like some panic practice 20 minutes before the race, but I think I'll do okay. I don't know if I'll win, but I think I'll do okay. Yes, and Small Ant, of course, being the one who has come up with some very helpful tutorials for this game in general. So um, an incredible resource if any of you guys want to check that out if you're interested in running Super Mario Odyssey in general. Definitely give Small Ant's channel on YouTube and on uh, Twitch a check out there. I think this is going to be a very interesting match. I think that um, we are more or less ready to get the show on the road. So if you guys want to head to the title screen, we will get this match started. Good luck to the both of you. All right, thanks. Yep, good luck, Small Ant. And as they drop out of the call, it'll just be me and Yo-Yo Swift. What do you like to be called? Do you like Yo-Yo or do you like Swift? What's what's your preference there? Um, You can call me either Yo-Yo or Yo-Yo Swift. Cool. Um, do you have any predictions for this race? Have you followed any of these runners at all? Um, I don't know. These are both two runners that I'm pretty f familiar with. And they're both really good, but small and hasn't had a ton of practice with bingo so i don't know it's going to be interesting i think i probably agree with you a little bit there awesome agron has kind of made a name for himself as one of the top bingo players definitely has a creative knowledge of the game is able to kind of work around a bingo board does this on the regular small ant a little bit more movement savvy i think he's a bit of a technical player um, and we have kind of seen this matchup in this tournament already, thinking back to things like Stravos versus Bry Guy. So I think this is really going to come down to um, how much Smallin has been able to cram for the test, so to speak. Yeah. All right, and these guys are on their way. We'll get the bingo board revealed as soon as possible here. All right. 
let's see what we got to work with here. Now, what about you, Yo-Yo Swift? Are there any particular squares on the board that make you a little bit nervous when you see them? Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to think about a lot of stuff still. Personally, for me, when I see any of the squares that say story moons excluding multi moons, that kind of makes me freaked out. Usually, that yeah. means that if you're going to include that in your route, it is more or less a metro finish for sure, mainly because not a lot of story moons exist along the way. That being said, you can kind of route around it if you know you have to go to metro, anyways. Um, the middle square of this board looking like it's going to be four moons for moon shards, which um, in itself is not a very difficult goal, but you kind of have to have a really good knowledge of the game. I think that when I see Moon Shards, I try and see if I can make a visit to Cap, because two sub-areas in the Cap Kingdom actually do have Moon Shards in them. Otherwise, that goal can be a little bit trickier. Yeah, definitely. And taking a peek at this board, it doesn't look like there is a cap revisit option here so that middle square might be a little bit more difficult of course there is a moon shard moon associated with the story in sand there's also one in lake there's one in lost and in metro so you could technically go to metro for the finish there but those moon shards are kind of out of the way also looking at this board there's a couple of seaside squares by the looks of it seven treasure chests i'm not sure can you finish that one before you get to seaside i I think you can. Because you can get one in Cascade, two in Sand. Actually, well, there is three in Sand if you are going to go for World Peace. But. Right, and it's not looking like there's a World Peace option on here yeah. either. Um, there is a snow one in the top corner, which kind of eliminates a lot of options as well. But there are a handful of um, goals associated with sub areas. So we might see some kind of ideas associated with that. Specifically, bottom left to top right is looking kind of juicy. Um, if you want to do some sub areas and then maybe column three as well. But that does revolve around seaside. Otherwise, you might be spending a lot of time in wooded with a board like this. Yeah, there's lots of wooded goals, like 28 moons wooded and 3 moons from deep woods. Yeah, those would combo well together, especially if you're going for some sub-area ideas. There's also 2 moons from sub-areas in Cascade on the top row there, but doesn't really combo very well with anything else. And also, because if you're going to do that and go to deep woods, there's also 2 treasure chests in deep woods as well. Ah, that's a very good point. So that could be well if you're, like, maybe row 5 would be good. Yeah, row 5 is a possibility. Um, if you're planning on getting a lot of moons in sand, though, you're going to have to combo it with yeah. something. So maybe doing some story moons or some moons from sub areas would be a good idea. There's also regional coins in sand on the board. But looking at this board, it looks like there aren't a whole lot of... Um, options to finish before Metro by the looks of it, unless you're going to be spending a lot of time in those early kingdoms. So I'm just trying to plan out a route of my own here. I'm not sure if you have any ideas of what you would do in this situation. I'm still trying to come up with a route. When I see things like sub areas, lots of moons, three moons in deep woods, see the treasure chest moons, I'm kind of piecing together something here. You probably could get away with a even a wooded finish with a board like this. You have to be very strategic, though, with your choices, unfortunately. Yeah. How many treasure chests are in the Wooded Kingdom? I think there's only the two in Deep Woods. 
two in deep woods. You got three in sand if you do world peace. And then one in, one in cascade. And there's like three in lake if you do the lake painting dub. Right. So you could potentially get away with seven treasure chest moons. Um, so this board actually does have a potential to finish in wooded if you were to do row four, row five, and column two. Yeah, that's what I was thinking before. And that being said, you would be spending a lot of time in specifically wooded and sand. Yeah. But you would also have to make a revisit to Cascade and Cap for those purchase moons. Uh, not a big deal, though, if that's all you're doing. Also, 16 moons in Cascade makes a Cascade revisit not a big deal as well. But that would also kind of combo. You have 16 moons in Lake and 12 moons in Lake. So you're kind of knocking out two things there. And then the rest of the goals, yeah. I think that would probably be like the earliest finish that you could come up with. Definitely can get 10 moons and 14 moons from sub areas with wooded and sand combined. Ready, that's probably the, the best idea here. We can actually see both of these guys are in the dino room at the same time, potentially noticing that 16 moons cascade is on the board, maybe even going for that two moons from sub areas goal. We'll have to see when they finish if they're gonna mark that one off. Yeah, well, maybe also just trying to get some sub areas for total sub areas. Yep, a very good point. This being a pretty sub area heavy board. And I suppose um, the if you were going to go back to cap for purchasing moons, for example, the um, four moons from moon shards in the middle is not such a bad idea if you go for like a bottom left top right kind of idea you can do the Thor three warp painting moons from lake and sand and wooded the one moon from keys could come from either lake or sand if you're getting world peace i suppose but we'll just have to see as this develops but neither of them are marking off the two moons from sub areas so it might be might be looking like 16 moons from cascade or just some sub areas Yeah, they're definitely going out of their way for a lot of moons in Cascade so far. Yeah, both probably going for that 16 moons. And yeah, they're doing lots of sub areas as well, so they're probably going for either that 10 from sub area or 14 from sub area. Or potentially both. Yeah, well, both. Yeah, typically in bingo. Um, if like the way I kind of structure my routes is I look for immediately I look for the things that would prevent or for would make me go to seaside or snow and I kind of just like make make a note of where they are and then I kind of pick some lines and I see if avoiding metro is even possible usually it's not however um, so things like seven story moons would probably take you to metro and it looks like these, you know, there is some potential to finish even as early as wooded, but then you kind of have to make sure that, you know, the goals in those lines still synergize well. Otherwise, you're going to be spending a lot of extra unnecessary time in places, so. Oof, Agron there taking a little bit of a death in this billiards chain chomp room. Gonna have to start from the beginning there. Um, Yo-Yo Swift, what is your experience with Bingo? How how long have you been doing that? Um, I've probably been doing it for... Like, I probably started doing Bingo... Um... This summer. So, I haven't been doing it for a whole lot of time, but I have a, a lot of knowledge still. Right. And... Is Bingo kind of your... Your forte, or have... Have you been dabbling in some other, like... Uh, main category runs as well. Yeah, I focus on any percent as well. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Definitely spending some time in Cascade here for the both of them. Both finishing off that chomp room. And it looks like Small Ant has a little bit of an edge when it comes to collecting the moons in here, probably because Agron did have to take that 
unfortunate death in this chomp billiards room. Egron stopping at 12 moons in Cascade before he heads off to the next place. So, he, there's a good chance that he might come back here for the 16 moons, maybe, if he's going to end up doing the purchase 5 moons, kind of like we said. Yeah, if he does notice that there is a wooded finish on the board, it probably makes sense that he would have to revisit. So maybe saving those extra four moons in Cascade for another time. And if he's coming in through the Odyssey, that means he can probably sweep through that kind of lower portion of Cascade, get some of the quick moons that are down under um, by the shop including the uh, the one above the rubble, as well as maybe the treasure chest moon in the waterfall basin. So definitely an option there. Small Ant is going to be marking off the 16 moons in Cascade before leaving. And um, considering that that square is surrounded by a lot of very slow goals, namely the five ground pound moons in Seaside and the eight moons in Snow, there aren't a whole lot of options for that square to be used except for column two so we might be seeing that from both runners here yeah they might both be going for that wooded finish yeah which is a pretty juicy idea because you know if you can if you can finish in wooded that means you can eliminate cloud which is just a minute and a half of just you know having to do something basically as well as lost which even any percent is still another two and a half minutes so you know just Getting getting some things out of the way, avoiding having to do some extra fluff, some any percent stuff, just to, um, you know, maybe just spend a little bit of extra time in the first kingdoms. Yeah, it's you, there's not a lot of opportunities where you get to finish in Wooded or Lake. It's true. Maybe taking advantage of that. Um, two hint arts on the board. You don't need the moons from them, It's it looks like. Yeah, just looking at it, which isn't bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Definitely can finish that goal in Lake and in Wooded combined together. And now we're in Sand. And if our prediction is correct, and they are going to be spending a lot of time here, really only need to collect lots of moons, however. Maybe some sub-areas will be um, gathered along the way. Also, if the Column 2 idea is viable, then they're going to be going for... Oh, sorry, for some Jaxi stands as well, but again, a very quick goal. Yeah. They're just going to bounce around the kingdom. You can see Agron going for this story moon here. Probably a good idea. kingdoms here um, it'll be kind of interesting to see I know that I kind of have something in mind when I come into sand sand and wooded tend to be the kingdoms you spend the most time in yeah in a bingo match so depending on what the goals are I kind of have a different way of approaching them so you, I mean sometimes I get lucky and sand and wooded end up just being in any percent run through but other times when it comes to maybe needing story moons or maybe needing um, 2D moons. There's usually a way I go about doing a kingdom and it's, it's kind of interesting to, to, to note whether that is the case for people who maybe don't run bingo as often, maybe don't know what they're doing and just kind of know the general location of things. Perhaps they just are trying to nail things down as fast as they can and don't really have a strategy in mind. But um, if you have good movement, which Small N has proven to be one of those people who does, um, it'll be interesting to see if maybe he can make that happen anyways. Yeah. So they're both getting a lot of moons right now. Yeah, 
It doesn't look like they have a particular rhyme or reason to the moons that they're getting. It doesn't look like they have any common theme, which means that it prob probably are just going to be collecting a bunch of them. We might see one or both of them finish in the inverted pyramid, in fact, because there's a couple of quick moons in there, as well as the Harriet fight. So potential clip into the pyramid is an idea. We did see Agron grab the story moon, which means he might make his way over to the moon shards area at some point or another. Small inch, just failed Jackson Moon, Skip. Oof, yep. Yeah. That's not a friendly one. And depending on your checkpoint, which was right there, luckily, um, he's gonna have to do this over again. Luckily though, he did get the checkpoint, so he's not that far behind. These guys were still really close in moons. Um, Agron did arrive in the Sand Kingdom uh, slightly earlier than Small Ant did. And they are at the same number of moons, so. Yeah, and they're both also doing those Jaxi moon stands as well. Yeah, you can see them actively calling Jaxi from stands. You're gonna see Small Ant take a little trip across the desert here, basically from the Jaxi ruins all the way up to the sub area in the northwest corner where the Bullet Bill area is, where Agron is right now actually. There is four stands for Jaxi all the way across the desert. Um, one in the Jaxi ruins, one that Small Ant just got by that lone pillar. He's going to be getting this luggage and then probably hailing ja Jaxi from the stand nearby. And then the last one being the actual sub area itself and as soon as small ant makes his way all the way over there you'll probably see him mark that square off too yeah, just going into the sub area as well of course sub area goals are on the board here so it makes sense that they would be going for some of these and Agron looks like he is going for the moon shards, so potentially he might be going for that moon shards goal, but... Um... Yeah, there are actually a couple of options here. Um, yeah. Either row 4, row 5, column 2, or the bottom left, top right, all of those options could potentially finish in wooded. Uh, the one moon from Keys is probably the slowest goal out of the, all of those. Maybe the seven treasure chest moons if you're not completely familiar with our, where they all are. But, um, but yeah, all viable options and really we could see either of these guys go for any of them. And purchase five moons is on the board. Like we said, that if we are finishing in wooded, that is going to require a revisit to Cap and Cascade. Agron already kind of got that in his sights, as we saw earlier, only collecting 12 moons and then leaving. So very likely he'll be coming back. Yeah. Alright, we are about halfway to that 30 moons in sand gold for both of these guys. Just yeah, taking John. Alright, and there we go. We see Small Ant marking off. Call Jaxi from four stands. That last one in town there being the one that he got last. Awesome Agron also marking it off. You can see Awesome Agron also purchasing moons. Not sure if that's on purpose for that particular goal, or maybe just one of his many, many sand moons that he requires. And Small One's actually leaving right now. Very interesting. They both are, actually. Now, if Warp Painting Moons is on one of their... Um, is on the agenda, you could say, if if either of them are deciding for that top right square, it's possible that they may be planning a revisit to sand as well. There are some options here where you could be doing some backtracking through the warp paintings while you're getting your warp painting moons. So we'll have to see if that comes into play. Yeah. 
because if you pick wooded first, for example, which I'm not, I'm actually wasn't paying attention. Maybe these guys did, but the wooded painting would then go to sand, and you could do some backtracking that way. Vice versa, the, if you choose lake first, then the lake painting goes into wooded instead, or sorry, into sand instead. So maybe some backtracking ideas there. Looks like Lake was chosen first by both of these guys, though. So if they are going to be going for row 4, if we do have a 16 moons from Lake, we do indeed. So it would make sense to kind of collect all of the moons in lake along the way here. Lots of very quick moons in lake. There are even some more quick ones available after you've achieved peace in this kingdom. So we might see them making a quick visit to Rango before making another loop through this kingdom. And not only is there a 16 moons in lake in row four, but there is also a 12 moons in lake in row five. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe they choose to go for something like that. And Agron was going to make a visit up to Rango, it looks like, even maybe just for the checkpoint, but he accidentally lost his fish, so he's going to have to back it up with a cap throw up here, grab the checkpoint, yeah, and it looks like he's just grabbing interruptions there in the uh, technical land. Of course, these things tend to happen with restreaming, so hopefully you guys are okay with that, and um, we're back, we're live. And we are ready in the bingo world again. And here we have um, some squares being marked off, kind of like we mentioned before. It looks like we're going to be going for some column two, maybe some row five, row four, and some top left, bottom, or bottom left, top right ideas from both of these runners, both taking a little bit of a different approach by the looks of it. Yeah, it looks like Smolin is going for the route we set at the beginning. Yes, that's right, with the row four and row five. Um, and it looks like um, Agron is going to be doing the bottom left, top right, opting out of the 30 moons in sand. Um, but we also, I'm a, a little bit curious, to be honest, because we did see Small Ant leave sand with the bare minimum required amount of moons, which makes me think maybe he has something else planned. Maybe he's going to be going for some column five ideas. And that seems all well and good until you realize that the seven story moons comes into the picture. And that particular square does require a metro visit. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. Maybe Small Ant planning on making a return to sand at some point in the future. Um, very unlikely circumstance, though. Um, we do see that Agron has marked off the 16 minutes in Cascade. Also must have taken a visit to, um, to Cap Kingdom, because he's also marked off this Purchase 5 Moon Square. But regardless, that column two, final square, 28 moons in Wooded. They're both going to be going for that one. So we're going to be spending a bit of time here in Wooded Kingdom. Um, looks like Small Line has a little bit of a lead as far as moon count goes. He's fighting Spirit now, which will give him some access to some other fast moons in the upper part of the Wooded Kingdom. There's also a Moon Shards uh, sub area available in Wooded that we will probably see Agron take advantage of here. Yeah. I'm just stacking up some Goombas for a quick moon along the way. Agron making his way over to this very quick. Thanks for the charge, Ground Pound Moon. And we will see him go into this sub area. And if he is in wooded, 
Um, it's very possible that this is the last Moon Shards Moon that he needs. If he's already taken a visit through Cap Kingdom. Yeah. Um, then it's very possible this is his last one. Yeah, there we see he has just marked it off. Very likely that he's going to be um, finishing up in this sub area, grabbing this nut moon. And um, he's going to be on his way with the four moon shards. Gotcha. Um. And then we see Small Ant here making his way through the top portion. He did just beat Spewart. Going to be gathering some quick moons up top here now. Going into some sub areas as well. He did just mark off the 10 moons from sub areas goal, which signals to me that he is going to be going for probably that bottom left corner as well. But potentially not, actually. We'll have to see. Because he did. He did just mark off the 26 moons in Wooded, so maybe yeah, he is actually he going be. for that column 5. Yeah. But he's going to have to go to Metro then. That is the unfortunate outcome of this particular route. Maybe he was not entirely familiar with this goal. He did say that he was a bingo player back when the old goals were a thing. Perhaps this is a new one that he's unfamiliar with. But that is going to have to be a Metro visit, I think. You get one in Cascade, you can potentially get two in Sand, and you can get two in Wooded, which means five. Definitely going to have to visit Metro to finish off the last two. Yeah, we see Agron marking off a couple of goals there. Just finished marking off the warp painting moons as well. So here he is taking a little visit to luncheon to grab his last one. Um, and it looks like Egron is making very quick work of this board. Just needs a couple of extra things, mostly pertaining to wooded, in fact. Just a couple of sub areas, um, as well as um, some deep woods active activities, rather. And he is more or less finished up here. Very, very quick board if you did indeed spot the wooded finish. Yeah. Smallant is getting his 28th moon now, which is also a story moon. Yep, very good call there. Marking it off the board, his 28 moons. He's also marked off his three warp painting moons, which means he's probably taking a quick visit to luncheon to finish that off. And while it does look like he is very close to finishing his goals, he does have to make his way all the way through to Metro in order to finish. So he's basically going to be doing a very quick lost any percent route. And then he'll be on his way through to Metro. And in order to get to those story moons, he actually has to beat Mecha Wiggler, which is not necessarily the fastest idea. So yeah. it'll basically be a race to the finish here for these guys. Um, a very quick board, but Egron more or less just has to finish up going into the deep woods in order to get his goals completed. So yeah, this is gonna look like probably a win for Egron. It does appear that way so far. Uh, Small Ant just needs to purchase another moon as well. Um, which he may or may not finish up in Metro, perhaps in Lost as well, if he's on his way there anyways. But yeah, Egron taking a quick little jaunt through the Deep Woods here. We've already seen him. Um, complete. He, he has marked off the 14 moons from sub areas, has not marked 10 moons from sub areas, but we can assume that that, of course, is finished already as well, unless we see him going for some sort of other diagonal, but I don't think that is going to be the case here. No. So he entered the deep woods with 23 moons. He just needs three more moons. 
Yeah, he just needs three more moons in uh, in total in order to mark off that 28 moons. We are looking at maybe gathering just some of the rest of the moons in the deep woods just to finish off the board. Yeah, and we see him taking a jaunt through. He's going to grab this rock, break it against the T-Rex, which is a very quick way of making this rolling rock happen. Um, you can kind of manipulate the T-Rex in a way where he crashes into things and kind of stuns himself, which I think is what Egron is going to be going for here. And as we watch Egron collect the last few moons that he has on the board, he's actually going to be joining us in the call right away here. Now, um, hello, friends. Oh, hello, how is it going? Uh, well, that, uh, that board was definitely sudden. Holy crap, that was bad. It looked really fun. You know what? Uh, I ne It's very rare that you get a treat such as a board that ends in wooded. And there were actually a couple of options here. Especially the deep woods. Indeed. You are done <laughs> in the deep woods. The, we can see the T-Rex actually kind of batting you around on the stream right mm. now. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry. I paused. Mario is fine. Mario's fine. That's all we need to know is right. that Mario is alive and well. Um, but yeah, you know what? There were actually a couple of options here, as far as we could see, that would finish in wooded. The other option being, instead of taking the diagonal like you did, doing row five. But I can understand why you would make the choice that you did. 30 moons in sand is quite a lot. Seven treasure chest moons kind of mm. goes out of the way. So I think that you probably had the optimal route here. How did you feel? Well, this board definitely had a lot of options. Um, this was uh, the second route I saw, actually. So while in Cascade, I was like, hmm, yeah, row four is definitely better than uh, row five. I initially did have row five, though. Right. So you had row five instead of Yeah, that was a good swap four. on my part. That would be an example of a route swap done right. Yes. Um, let's see. What... What went kind of wrong? Well, the chomp area death was very depressing. It was a I little bit unfortunate. Happy about that. Yeah, we um, did catch that. Other than that, I feel like the only other thing that went like wrong per se was I overcalculated how many moons I had in the lake. So the hint art strat ended up being pointless. Uh yes, just kind of one moon extra there, which is I mean not a huge deal. In the and, grand scheme like, of that kind of sucks because I feel like that's my thing. <laughs> is like it's, knowing, you know, knowing to kind of one less moon for a total lake goal. And yeah, I get you. <laughs> just getting the last one in Cascade. But I mean, a board that finishes under 45 minutes um, is always a welcome board to play on. Oh, yeah, I would definitely. Say. If I played a little bit better, I feel like this could have sub 43 most certainly. Just a cut. Well, I mean, that's kind of the name of bingo, though, right? A little spaghetti. So I think you played very well. I think that the execution was there. Aside from some minor technical difficulties, we did get to see a lot of this board kind of come together. And, you know, we got treated with a wooded finish, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. So we can um, see. The initial plan with the end there was I was initially going to do the new uh, darker side deep woods, but I haven't practiced it enough. Uh, so yes. I was like, oh crap, I don't know how to do this. That's <laughs> kind of why you saw me grab the nut. And right. After that, I was like, wait, what do I do once I grab the nut? Yeah. The new <laughs> I dark... forgot, So I was new... like, all right, I'll just uh, transition back to old deep woods. Yeah, you might as well. There were some quick moons along the way in there, so yeah, able definitely. to do that just like, fine. Yeah, I just felt the need to, you know, make sure to get like. Uh, probably 23, 22 above wooded, and then just finishing deep woods. Right. And, um, uh, uh, was there anything that I did that, like, you know, caught you off guard, per se? Because I feel like... Not necessarily, and unfortunately we were down for about 15 minutes with the stream oh. having some technical difficulties. Dude, so... there's technical difficulties all over the place. Yeah, this was a, a little bit of... Before the match, and then during the match as well. Like, yeah, the... The bingo play, play style was not the only spaghetti. We did have some stream issues, but we were able to get back up and running quickly. Basically, we missed um, Lost, or sorry, not Lost. We missed Lake and 
I was about to say, I didn't go to Lost. <laughs> yeah, no, Lost was not in the picture there. We missed Lake, and we missed your revisits to Cascade and Cap for your oh, okay. purchase moons. But aside well, from uh, that... Yeah, all you really need to know was in Cap, I did Frogger Moon Shard. Right. And I purchased the moon. Basically, I did the revisits to ensure that I can finish by Wooded. Yeah, that's kind of what we were looking at on the commentary end, is just how we can make this board finish in Wooded. I also and... messed up my sand ratting a little bit. I was initially going to do both Bullet Bill Maze and Moai, but I miscounted my means. So I skipped out on Moai and was like, eh, I could just do the Frog Room and Cap. Yeah, get it. was kind of my thought process clear. behind that. Instead, yeah. And there are actually two Moon Shard Moons in Cap Kingdom, if you know where there they are. There are, but I personally only like the Frog Room one. I think the Poison Wave sub room is pretty awful. Yeah, it's not I'm bad also not a big fan no of the strategy. Chomp Room and Cascade. As you can probably tell. Yeah. <laughs> if billiards is not your strong suit, maybe not your favorite <laughs> sub area. But, it's not um, even the billiards, just sometimes when you do that uh, chomp capture method, you know, uncapturing from chomp to chomp, just sometimes you just don't capture the chomp and then you die and waste like 30 seconds. It's pretty depressing. Yeah, such is the way of bingo though, sometimes. Well, we are just watching Small Ant finish up here. He did choose a route that is going to force him to get some story moons. Unfortunately, that does require a day metro visit. He's going to be getting up to the Mecha Wiggler, finishing up the fight, and then... Oh, a funny thing about uh, Small Ant's route. At first, I thought we had the same route, and I was like, I'm in trouble because he is a much better player than I am at this game. <laughs> So, like, if we had the same route, that would have been extremely monkey-ass. It just would have came down to who executed it better. Very true. And we we um, noticed that he marked off 12 moons in Lake, and that was a signal that you guys were going for yeah, some different ideas. Yeah, yeah, that kind of let me take an ease break. I'm like, okay, not doing the same route. Thank goodness. Yeah. And we kind of thought that maybe he was going to do what we said, column 2, row 4, row 5. But then he also left sand at around the same time that you did very early, basically getting the minimum amount of moons in sand. So that was kind of off the table, unless there was a revisit through a warp painting or something, but that never ended up happening. Yeah, switching to row four was definitely a very good decision on my part. Like, it just has amazing synergy with the other two lines that I picked. Yeah, can confirm that. So. Sure. I mean, the gameplay said it all. Like, I didn't really play the best I felt. Like, I thought my execution was slightly lacking here and there, but I, I was still able to sub 45 just because the route was just that dang good. Yeah, can confirm. Um, if you get gifted with a wooded finish, you should probably take it. I don't think that there are very, there are very many situations where that can work out on the boards. Yeah, that... Yeah, that 44 has definitely been one of my better times in Triple Bingo. Most certainly. I still haven't gotten a board where I've gotten sub 40 yet, though, so that's uh, that's still yeah. a work in progress. I gotta wait for another wooded finish to pop. Indeed, those are rare, but they... That's they pretty do. much the only way you can do it. Yeah. I, I think my best board out of all of the boards that I've played has been like a 40-41. So, I'm close, but not quite. Indeed, very good. Very yeah. good time. Um, I don't really have too much else to say, so... Yeah, I mean, um, we are watching Small Ant finish up here. He's just got to buy the one moon in metro which it looks like he's already marked off the board then he'll be going around clicking some musicians and he will be hitting the timer so almost oh, done here after this match you know before i have my internet issues or whatever i was uh <laughs> practicing snow dram because i was worried that um uh, uh three warp paintings and i'm not very good at snow dram so I was practicing that a bit beforehand. Luckily, uh -huh. only one of those goals popped up. The three warp paintings. Just, you know, not with a snow finish. Yes. Yes, indeed. Thankfully. But yeah, um, ideally, if you were to get three warp paintings and end in snow, you would do Snow Dram as one of your warp paintings. 
Yes, or the lake painting jump indeed might be a good idea as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the lake painting jump would be the other one. That way you only have to go through one actual warp painting. Right. And it would probably just be the sand one and lake. Or, you know, luncheon, depending on what order, you know, you went lake or wooded first. Right. <clears throat> Well, Yo-Yo, do you have any questions for Agron about this match? Um, not really. <laughs> All right, you know, fair it's enough. pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I, I, I think I pretty much picked the best route on the board. I would say so. Yeah. Wooded finish, godlike synergy, so-so execution, still sub forty-five. I think it was a pretty good board. Yeah. It is kind of nice that when some things just, like, barely go out of the way, like, for example, the one moon from Key, probably not the fastest goal as far as this Yeah, but it is in a sub-area, so... But, but uh, yeah, it is in a sub-area, you needed 16 moons in Lake anyway. You know, there's a couple things that go together here. Yeah, that lake crowding was not good. I was warping all over the place. Yes, indeed. And Small Ant marking off the last of his goals on the board, that seven story moons. And we have him here in the call. Small Ant, how's it going? Hey. How Sorry, did you feel about ant. that? This board was a little... Well, I, looked at, I, I, I looked at the board and I was like, all right, it looks like I have to go to at least Metro no matter what. So I was like, all right, well, what's the fastest route that I think? Well, uh, well at least like end in Metro or something, or day Metro. <laughs> Okay, well, this one looks fast. There's, like, a lot of moons that I have to collect, but there's a few kingdoms I can just do, basically, any percent in. Yep. And then, like, yeah. I'd never done a story moon goal before, so it's like, how many can that be? That's not that bad. And then, like, midway through, it's like, oh, excluding multi-moons. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm like, I have to get all of the musicians, okay. <laughs> yeah, I it mean, was after... you didn't need all of them. Like, there's five if you... Uh, yeah, it was after Sand that I noticed it, though. Beforehand. That was the thing. Yeah, if you're already out of sand, there's two but of them in sand. But my guess is you so. only had First Moon, Tower, and uh, the one before Spirit. Nope, I uh, I did... Uh, I did, yeah, two, the two in Wooded, I did the one in uh, Cascade, of course. And then I did four in Metro, because by the time I got out of sand, I realized that it's not multi-moons. Right, yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah that's but... Kinda... I feel like my routing was pretty good. There's a few, like, untimely deaths, but I feel like my movement and my paths through the kingdom was actually really decent. Mm -hmm. The the only thing is just your route was clearly much, much better, <laughs> having a, a wooded end other than a, uh, yeah, than we a were... metro, day metro end. <laughs> the the deep kind of woods finish, just to top it off. Mm -hmm. yeah. we so were I mentioning... don't have to climb back out of deep woods. We were mentioning well, they... that there were a couple of options on this board that actually did finish in wooded. Um, the other option there being row five, potentially. Which was my initial route, but then I realized how... It's with my other two rows. So... Just, yeah, there was just, some good synergy with... Piece uh, together. With row five, or row four, rather, and the diagonal there, so... Yeah, it mm -hmm. was just a really good board. I felt like with better execution, this could have potentially been like a sub 43 or sub 42. What was your time there, uh, Agra? I got a 44.28. Oh god, I'm 11 minutes slower. Nah, it's cool, man. Um, and that with, all came I mean, from... With the Metro finish, I mean, it's kind of expected. Yeah, the one thing is I, uh, I saw you check off like Moon Shards, and I'm like, alright, he just finished Cap Kingdom. I have a chance. <laughs> it's gonna take him a while to get these 28 Moons in Wooded probably gonna take them like five or six minutes and that's like about the amount of time it takes to get from like cloud to lost to day metro i think so i might have a chance and then he like checked everything off at once like 30 seconds later i'm like oh man <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think my wooded in general ended up being about a 10 and a half minute wooded yeah this was the thinking. route that i put together through it um the only thing that was a little bit weird about it was i jumped down a little bit um early you know, from where Nut on the Tall Fence was. I jumped down to where Goombas was preemptively. Like, I didn't go to Warp Painting immediately. But then after that, I remembered, oh, cool, I get to show off this uh, Rocket Flower tech to the Warp Painting now. <laughs> oh, the, the <laughs> Rocket Flower refresh. I preemptively jumped down. Oof. So I warped back up and just did that. 
The one thing that I'm super happy with in this one is that right before the race, I couldn't do the lake painting jump. Ah, yeah. And I spent like probably like three attempts trying to figure it out, and I got it on my third attempt, and I was like, I really hope this isn't in there. And then I see three warp paintings, so I'm like, okay. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> uh, similar story, just with a different jump. I was practicing snow dram in case um, I had a snow finish with three warp paintings. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. A very so, interesting board that we have here a with a wooded finish in a couple of different places. Um, Agron's knowledge of bingo perhaps prevailing here, and um, I think it did come down here, Small Ant, to the uh, the lack of knowledge on the new bingo, um, the 2.0, as you say, um, goals with this new Story Moons edition, mm -hmm. uh, excluding multi moons, maybe is what the trip up was here. Um, with without that particular square, you could have also finished in wooded, but uh, you know that's kind of I think the the deal breaker there. So. Yeah, I mean, um, like, Column 5 wasn't bad, it was just that 7-story moon, which didn't allow you to finish early. Indeed, and, yeah. Yeah, thinking about it from my perspective, 7-story moons, that's like, alright, I'm gonna get that by the end of late. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, you know, it'll be fine. Yeah, excluding multi-moons, unfortunately, <laughs> so. But anyways, that was a very well-fought match between you guys. We're gonna have to call it a night for the stream. Thank you guys for the good showing. Apologies yeah, no again problem, for the technical difficulties. Congratulations to Agron for moving on to the next round in the tournament. Mm -hmm. It's going to be me versus Bry Guy. That's, that's going to be a heckin' good match. Yeah, a battle of giants in Super Mario Odyssey Bingo. Routing and execution. And that, with that being said, thank you, Yo-Yo, for joining me on commentary today. No problem and have yourselves a good night everybody watching we will be back with some bingo action tomorrow again and um take care in the meantime thank you for joining us all right bye everyone bye bye